Hey guys, welcome to my video diary. This is going to be an actual Avery Enterprise work video here, and it's actually a day in history for Avery Enterprise because today, actually, it's not the first day, but um, the first second week that I have um, my boy Luke came back full time. So big day in history for us, and uh, we're uh, we're out here. We're going to build a a porch basically to replace this right here so today our first step is is we got to put some uh footers so dig some holes pour some footers down here along the edge to structurally hold the new porch that we're putting on um so that's yeah first step My favorite part, love digging holes. yeah so unfortunately it's grab the post hole digger and start digging and then uh, in a little bit here, we're going to show you the, uh, learned it from the Mexicans, the Mexican way how to mix concrete. All right. We got all the holes dug. And uh, for what, how cold is it out here? Like 32 degrees? Yeah, probably 32, 20s, lower 30. 32 degrees, I'm sweating. But what we ran into down here is a footer for the porch, which is a good thing. So we dug a pilot hole next to it. What we're going to do, it's 36 inches deep, and we'll pour the concrete up to the existing footer, and uh, we should be set to go. <coughs> Time to mix the concrete, and like I say, the Mexicans showed me this trick, and I've never went back ever since. And uh, basically what you want, I usually get a smaller tarp, usually like an 8x10. This is probably, yeah, it's probably an 8x10. You can use the smaller tarp, the better. And you just want to dump uh, the 80 pound bag or 50 pound, whatever you're mixing. We're using 80 pounders of just quick crete, uh, high strength. And uh, pour it here in the middle of there. We got a bucket filled with water and we're going to get ready to mix. I'm going to see if I can hook this camera up here because it's going to be hard to film and mix at the same time. I need to put a little crater in the middle. Perfect, perfect mix. Should look like pancake batter when it's all said and done. Fine job, my friend. Now we funnel this into the hole. Take it all. So that hole is poured. We poured it a little bit up over the footer. We repeat the process that we just did for one, two, three, four more holes. Now we wait until that concrete sets up and uh, start building tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to another brisk morning. Day two on the porch build. Uh, got here this morning. Luke don't waste no time. He's already got a post in. So what? What we're doing is we're measuring off the house, finding out what the original stoop measurement is, and it's actually out about, what, a half an inch, Luke? Yeah, at least a half an inch. So we went to the farthest outside, which was this one. We already put this post in and set. The concrete set up real nice for the footers, real good. And got the post cut. In this case, we're letting our post extend up uh, at least three foot above what the finished deck is going to be because the posts will be incorporated uh, as our railing system when we're completely said and done. So we got one post in. We're going to go ahead and set the other, let's see, four right now. All right, posts are set. Posts are plumb and they're the perfect uh, dimension from the house out. We put a two by four up there because that's what we're framing over the top of this uh, existing slabs we don't have enough space behind under that door there to do anything bigger um, but then we took a we got over here we put set the transit up we took a reading from the top of the uh, two by four there and we're going to transfer that measurement over here to these four posts and that will be uh, the top where our beam is going to be set I 
down uh, three eighths, down an eighth, up just a fuzz, just a fuzz. Good, right there. All right, let's double check it. That's money right there. All right, so we got the beam in. Right now we just got it tacked with one screw. We'll go throw ledger locks in there before we're done. We also laid this two by four up here, which is gonna be basically supported on this back, um, well, porch. And that porch is really level. We've already checked it with the transit. And Luke is laying out our layouts now for our our joists, which are not really joists, they're more like sleepers because they're not really, they're not gonna be structurally really, if not, if, if I use two by fours as uh, joists, this thing would be like a springboard. But luckily, it's sitting on a concrete slab. All right, so we got the, the front ledger cut. We took a consistent measurement from here, from, from the door here to the inside of the beam, which happens to be in this case 121 and a half inches, and we cut, um, we're cutting a bunch of these two by fours. Luke's screwing them in on this end, and then we're gonna push it back as one entity unit. If not, we wouldn't have been able to get a face nail on the side that uh, Luke's doing, which has been a toenail, which isn't sturdy at all. Also, I'm making all my cuts for the beam and that on my chop saw. And I know it may be an overkill, but I get a nice square cut as opposed to a circular saw. If it was bigger dimensional lumber, I don't think I would have had a choice but to use a, um, a circ saw. Luke got all that backside in face nail. We pushed it tight to the house. It dropped in right into the back side of the beam. <clears throat> and now Luke is doing another face nail. A face screw. We happen to be screwing this deck. And then, even though we probably really don't have to, we'll throw joist hangers on those ends, just to be safe. Whenever I'm doing a job, I, I, I know most people probably watch it say, well, that's pretty much a real overkill, but I'd rather overkill it because my name's on this project. All right, so we got the joist hangers all in here. And being a two by four, it's got a lot of spring. Like I said, it's more like a springboard and the slab was not level at all in fact it was probably a, an inch and a half out as you can see the gap down there on that end so what we did was we put these blocks in here which we usually put in anyways but we pushed them down to the top of the the slab and that way when you step on it there's no spring whatsoever it's as solid as a rock looks good all right, she's officially framed in the best we can. We're ready to go get some decking. This deck measures a little over 19 feet. And one of the golden rules uh, on any uh, deck project or anything that you're doing, um, what, you don't, what you want to avoid the most of is what they call butt joints because it looks like butt. Um, so with that being said, we didn't want to go like a 16 footer and a four footer and so on. So we're actually going and making a run to a actual real lumber store. Okay, not like a Lowe's or Home Depot um, and actually getting uh, premium 20 footers on the decking. And that way this job will be basically quality. So I got to show you this. We, well, we started decking. So we got about uh, seven planks down, screwing everything down. And Luke started crying a little bit because he said his fingers were getting sore. So he came up with this new method here. Have you ever seen such a thing? He takes the screw and he taps them and he says it's so much more efficient and so much more quicker. So this is actually the first time for We'll be into the next job this. by the end of the day. Yeah. Kind of a first time for me on that one. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll be a new thing, you know, tap the screws in and, and uh, no, know he's he's claiming he could screw these down a lot faster than holding them with his fingers so we'll see so I wanted to show you something every once in a while you run into a situation where these boards they come down and you start to get a gap so the golden rule of thumb is you want to butt these tight because they will shrink the old rule the old school was spacing with an eight penny nail which was about oh an eighth inch uh, gap you do that now and you drive a truck through that hole so anyways um, we used to use a chisel, but show them this new tool that we found. It's called a Bowflex. You go there, you crank on this lever there, and it pins that 
as tight as can be. You can hold it enough time to zip a screw in. All right, day two. Day two, and you ready to see the progress? Are you really? Not much more than what you last saw two seconds ago, but I'll show you. A little more than halfway being decked. And that's what premium decking looks like. You know what, you don't have any seams and minimum knots. Luke, that looks really good, dude. Looks nice. Oh. Even better when it's done. And I do have to tell you, Luke's method, we did time it, stopwatched it. It was four minutes and 56 seconds my way and five minutes, 40 some seconds his way. So quicker to do it my way. But hey, A plus for giving the effort, Luke. All right. Hey, welcome to day three, warmer day. Today's gonna be like 50 degrees. So I'm liking that. Still a little nippy, probably 34 degrees right now, but it's gonna be in the 50s and that's great working weather. Today, gonna finish decking. So it's where we left off in the morning. We, uh, we got one board down. We had to basically do a little custom uh, jigsaw in here. So this post fit right down over the top, or that deck plank fit right down over the top of that post. And uh, Luke, hopefully we'll get to railing and steps today. I want you to check this out. We had to bust this concrete step out, which I thought was like cinder block and bust out easy, but basically it's one poured solid concrete stoop and let me tell you something we don't have a jackhammer we use brute power right here with a sledgehammer and it bounces off like a rubber mallet on a on a hard floor literally it's like a rubber band all right decking is done we had uh, this last one was really crazy we actually had the same thing basically cut a hole and four along a whole board four of them and slide it down over the posts now we're getting the uh, railing supports in we cut the, the four by fours 36 inches from the top of the deck to the top of the post so all of those are equal now and we are putting in the top and bottom rail for the railing so uh, Luke show us how this next one goes in here oh he's pre he's pre drilling He's getting the screws off preset. He's got the bottom rail in. We're basically spacing it off the ground or off the top of the deck uh, with a two by four. That gives you three and a half inches of a sweep space. Let's see, uh, let's see. Let's see how well I fit. Now, like I was telling him, even though the posts are somewhat plumb, if they're out a sixteenth of an inch in one direction, that's an eighth inch difference. But you always measure the bottom rail and then the top you make fit as you cut the you cut each one equally. Can you do it without my help? That's the question. Dude, this is more than Come on, you got it. It puts some... It's not gonna dip. He's not gonna get it. I gotta help him. All right, with a little persuasion, we got it in. I had to pull and he had to push and, but it's uh, a little look at that tight gap. That's the way you want to do it right there. All right. I'll show you this here. We got partial railing up. Um, so last time you saw, we were putting the, the, the rails on here. This section's not quite done. We ran out of screws. But basically, after the rails are up, I don't know if you can see these marks, I lay out the top there. And uh, you put the bass here. It's basically five inches on center. And then uh, another tip, if you have balusters, uh, pre-drill them because they will split. Not everyone will split, but they will split. We pre-drill them and we screw them. So, and by the way, Luke, they said it was supposed to be 50 some degrees today and it is freezing. It's, and it was snowing two seconds ago. So I think they lied. Yeah, nowhere near 50. All right, it's the end of day three. And I uh, got so caught up uh, when I build steps because my mind's always thinking that I forgot to film when we started the steps. So pretty much steps are done. And uh, here they are nice and solid real wide all we have to finish now is the railing coming down the sides capping it and skirting off look solid as a rock 
No movement whatsoever there, Luke. We're gonna skirt the bottom side of this to hide all that, and we also have some big chunks of concrete that we gotta get, but we have pretty much a truckload. And I didn't wanna bring the dump back today. So Luke's coming back with his truck. Put mine to good work. Yeah, you better, it's a diesel. Look at that. Day four. We're gonna be wrapped up here in about a half a day, probably today. Today, she added decided to add skirting onto there, so that was, um, an extra expense and an extra um, more hours added to the job. So Luke is working on um, getting the supports set for the uh, skirting. And I am over here working on the railing coming down the stairs here. We custom notched the bottom here, dug a hole for support, and uh, that's what I'm going to be working on. So this is Wanda Long. And she is Vonda Long. I said Wanda Long. This is Vonda Long. She is the homeowner who we built this porch for. Are you happy with the finished product? I love my new deck. Awesome. We're glad. We try to please. So here it is. The railing is on. The last you saw, we had the railing. We capped it off with two by six and make our miters real nice. And then I'll show you the skirting down here, the finished product. That's Luke's job for you. He skirted it all. And that's what the final product looks like. So there you go, an Avery Enterprise construction video. If you found that educational or entertaining, consider liking this video. And uh, if you liked it enough, maybe you might wanna share it. Uh, if you uh, are looking forward to more videos and you aren't a subscriber, continue, uh, consider subscribing and uh if you're in the area northeastern ohio consider looking us up and we'll build it for you all you gotta do is sit back and write us a check so until next time peace out